Alrighty, last time in our Odd Realm 10.0.2 beta tutorial, I walked through some of the basics of how to set things up, but this time we're going to talk a little bit more about survival and making sure that you thrive in the game. So before I get my game started, I wanted to talk about a few things. First off, I have water down here, but the issue with the water is that it's several layers away, and it takes guys time to climb up and down these layers. And in the time that they're climbing up and down those layers, you're going to lose a lot of their ability to be working on other things. And also you're going to lose a lot of time to when this water is needed. So if some people are getting thirsty, uh, this water is not going to get back up to the surface fast enough. So uh, what I'm going to do really quickly is tell them to stop whatever they're doing. And then that way they'll go and take care of the fact that they're all, they all seem to be hungry and thirsty right now. Um, and... When they're climbing up and down, you can you can do a couple of things. First off, you can put ladders or stairs here so that they can move up and down more quickly. Uh, or you can just build a well local to you and you can get water from the well, which is the option that I am going to go with. So I'm going to add a couple more rooms here to my villa area. And there's kind of a pattern to the way I do this. Oops. And uh, this room right here is going to be my well room. So what I'm going to do is place the well right in here. Now you'll notice I don't have enough material to place the well just yet. So I'm going to set it as priority three. And hopefully my miner is going to get out and take care of these uh, mining this stone. And then my builders will haul the stone back and start uh, building here. I'm also going to put a dirt floor here because eventually I'm going to want to dig up that uh, coal that's underneath and use it to make torches for all the things that I'm doing under here. Now I can check my Tomes of Industry again and you'll see that I have the Stonework Tome of Industry, uh, uh, Stonework Advancement ready for me because I have two Tomes of Industry. So I'm gonna click there, spend that, and it gives me a few new blocks, mostly the stone stuff that I need. So you'll see I have now tiles and I also have some props. The really important one is the stone furnace. I also need a stool and a cabinet and now I just happen to know these from memory. Uh, and that's this room right here is going to be my furnace room. So I'll hit R and I'll select both of these actually because I want it to be, whoops, and I made a mistake there. That's not supposed to be a room, it's supposed to be a forge. So I'm gonna make this a forge and it's gonna be both my forge and my smithy. The smithy is gonna be up here. And when I go into the room management, you'll see that this forge I actually have uh, here functions of foundry and smithy and the profession requirement is set to blacksmith now i don't have a blacksmith but i do have some guys that have metalwork and uh, stonework ready so i'm going to select all professions and change the skill requirements to be only stoneworking and metalworking because that's what happens in these two rooms is stonework and metalwork you'll see i need one furnace one cabinet and one stool for the foundry and one anvil one table and one stool for the smithy and it should populate with two owners once I start playing. There we go, I have my stonemason and my carpenter who both have the metalworking and or stoneworking skill enabled. I also wanna create this well room so that I can go ahead and get it started right now. And what I'm gonna do in the room management section, uh, it'll populate with three people because anybody can use it basically. But I'm also gonna set up auto jobs here of the water and I'm going to set it to create one water job whenever there's less than one water job. So it will always be generating water jobs. And you might think, oh, well, that'll waste the guy. He'll just be forever there uh, creating water. Well, I have 30 beverages right now. I don't really need more than that at the moment. So what I can do is just toggle this off with this button. And as I get lower on water i can just toggle it back on and it will start back up again it is fiddly i do have to pay attention to it rather than saying you know when i am running low on water make make a job to do 30 uh to go grab 30 waters but whatever uh and that's that's coming in a future update uh but for right now uh this this works i mean i'm also going to add a stockpile and i'm going to limit the stockpile to just beverages and then i'm going to change the storage preference to be in containers but that means I do need build, to build con some containers in there. So I'm going to go back to my build screen and I'm going to place a couple of barrels in here so that the beverages will actually store inside of this room. Now I'm going to let time run and hopefully my 
guys should start going to get some food because they all seem like they're hungry. But I'm just going to cycle through them really quickly and stop whatever jobs they have to see. Make sure that they'll go get some food. Hopefully nobody dies. Get food, man. Okay, there we go. So every once in a while, they will get stuck on working and not remember to feed themselves. I'm going to cycle through right now and see who's still hungry. This guy is still hungry. So let's see. There we go. Okay, so you just hit Y to stop whatever job they're working on, and that will get them going again. So my farm here is completely empty of grass, which is good. That's what I want. Uh, you'll see this little spot that's being mined out. It's actually two Z levels down, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but what I'm going to do for the farm, I'm going to open up the crops section here. And because it's early on and I don't have quite enough uh, of any of these things yet to plant, I'm going to come down here to the carrot and I'm going to say plant all 10 of these carrots. Now, I know that when I harvest the carrots, I'll also get back seeds. So the other option here is I could just make this nil and say every time that I have less than one carrot job, I want to create 10. And then that way, once it, I run out of carrot jobs, it'll just make 10 carrot jobs. And then it'll go to plant those 10 carrot jobs until it's done. And hopefully by the time it's done, I'll have more carrots to be able to plant. So I'm going to do the same thing down here with the wheat. We're going to create 10 wheat jobs because I have uh, 10 wheat seeds. And that way it'll plant all of those. And then I'll show you, it'll get stuck because I will run out of space. I have... Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21 spaces. So I'm going to have one extra job uh, that actually gets created in the world here, here and I'll have to cancel it. Right now my miner is going out to get the stone and we'll just hang out for a minute while it works on stuff. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. Some of my uh, crops are done, but not all of them. And one of the things I'd like is for my miner to start mining up all of this coal. So I'm going to hit J to open up the jobs menu, and I'm going to go down one level, and I'm going to look for all of these coal deposits. And I'm actually going to start digging them up. I want to make sure that they don't fall under my farm right now. And so I'm going to do that to get all of these coal deposits dug up because I do actually want this coal. It's gonna make it easier to mine my way down under the surface because I will have now the ability to make torches. I could also get this copper, uh, but sometimes it's it just leaves holes on the surface and I would rather just dig the copper up, honestly, from down here, a couple of layers beneath the surface. So that's what my next step is gonna be, is to dig up this. I'm not sure why he's not mining these things, but I'm actually going to cancel all of these jobs and then recreate them because every once in a while they just get confused and forget about what they're actually doing. Oh, my stonemason doesn't have a job right now. So since my stonemason doesn't have a job at the moment, I am going to uh, set the priority on some of these jobs here. Up. Now I will build houses over these two sections right here. Little home rooms for them to be able to live in and breed in and now I'll go ahead and get those started and both my stonemason and my carpenter will work on those rooms. Hopefully my miner knows what he's doing here. with the stone so then I can finish off these two rooms here. Okay, so a little bit more time has passed and I'm going to actually... Okay, so a little bit more time has passed. I'm going to start building my second story of this building right here. So I have the first story built, and if I use my mouse wheel and mouse wheel up, you'll see the tops of these walls that have been built right here. What I'm going to do is set up a building on the top wall. Now, 
uh, in previous versions of the game, you had to hold down a button to actually build on the, the second level, but because we have this option to disable or enable the single layer, what we can do is just hit left alt and see only this layer, or we can just leave this uh, single layer selection only on. And now what I can do is just create these rooms here that I want to create at this level. And these are going to be the two rooms that are above it. And then I want to put in floors here for the rooms. And I'm going to actually build these next, as well as create another floor area on the first floor for my next plot of crops. And what you'll have right here is my next plot of crops, which is going to be more of the crops, but I'm actually probably going to put in, um, I'm going to put in some fiber in this area right here because that's more important for me right now. But they'll start with the second layer and they'll flip back and forth between things that they're building. My farmer currently has nothing to do, so I'm going to create this second room here. And let's see, we're going to create another farm. Grab this. And then do these three right there like that. And now I'm going to create this second farm. Call this my fiber farm. Two fiber. And I'll create a stockpile for it. Limit it to seeds only. You get a lot of seeds from uh, farming the fibers and things like that. Now you notice right now it won't take an owner, but that's because I have this limit to unique on. I'm going to turn it off, and now my farmer is in. I'm also going to turn off all of my other uh, groups and all of my other functions. So now what I have is just this garden right here, and I'm going to set up an, a job to auto harvest so he'll get rid of all that myrtle grass. All right. And that should be good. And then I'll just make sure that the fiber farm gets taken in there. And now I have an empty slot here that's going to affect the farm, but it's not a big deal because I can just build in a dirt block right there. I'm actually going to make that top priority because I'm going to need to... Where is he idle? should have oh he doesn't have these crates so I need to build those crates for him real quick now once this crate populates in you'll see my farmer will now go to work hopefully there we go uh, so he starts working once the room is actually functionally put together Now you'll notice right here I have two jobs that are on hold, and these are both wheat jobs that are missing items. I can go into my jobs menu and cancel them, but they'll be repopulated with probably wheat jobs or um, with carrot uh, planting jobs once the farmer is done harvesting this field over here. Which is alright because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carrots, so if he populates it with one of the carrot jobs that'd be good because then he'll uh, plant a carrot in there. I may ask how I'm going to make this a fiber uh, crop, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to uh, harvest some of the wild grasses and then plant them in here. And you'll notice I'm getting low on my beverages too, so what I'm going to do is go into this room, and I'm going to enable in my well house. I'm going to change this so... I just need to tick this button right here to toggle the well enabled, and you'll see that someone will come over and start... Uh, working on water there. So it's going to be C2 water. Now they will drink water directly out of the well. They don't prefer it to purified water. Uh, and it doesn't, again, same as cooked food, it doesn't give as much of a, a water return. But water is so easy to come by with the well that it doesn't really uh, make that much of a difference. And I just leave this running until I get maybe 30 or 40 in, on the beverage and then I'll just stop it after that. So this room is done. I'm going to go in here and build some props. So I want, in this room, I would like a bed, a bookshelf, 
a ch two seats and a table. Don't ask me why. This is just how I set up the rooms for them. And then I'll hit R and select the home. And I'm going to create this as a home. Now with the home, you sh you'll see that it should be set to automatically grab up to five owners because of the size, but it's limited to family only. So only members of the family will take this one. And this is good because these two uh, family members will now uh, also have time to mate and they will make little settler babies and the settler babies will become different professions that will be uh, good to add to our crew. So about 38 water. I'm going to go back into my well house here and I'm going to toggle it off and just leave it alone for a little while. Get rid of that myrtle grass there. And then I'm going to set up my farmer to go harvest some of the natural stuff that's growing. Now you'll get good at seeing what has actually grown on here. So this right here is mature burr clover. This is immature large crabgrass. So I'm going to grab that burr, burr clover and set this up to three. That's mature. This is mature. This is mature. Here we go. And I just basically need enough to fill in this area with um, with some fiber to grow. There we go. Then while I'm out here, I also want to go ahead and start picking up beetroots because they are fantastic for uh, food. So I'm going to harvest the beetroot there and let's see if there's any other beetroots. I can harvest. I don't see any right now. But one's good because that'll get me started. I'll have enough seeds then to start and get some more some cauliflower growing there. I can also harvest these blackberries. I will eventually use the blackberries uh, in... Oh, there's another beetroot. I will eventually use the blackberries in my fruit harvesting because they also are good for creating um, beverages. And they're preferable beverages. So, let time run a little bit and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so my forester is mostly staying idle. They are functioning as a cook at the moment, uh, but what I would like is for them to have an arboretum to work with. So, I'm going to hack these logs down and then I'm going to build in a few extra things. I won't make you watch me do all of that, but I'm going to build in the rest of my villa basically in zeros to make sure that I have it all set up. And then I'm going to create my arboretum down here. Okay, so coming back to game now, I've built out the rest of what my uh, villa is going to look like. I do have an issue here where inside of my arboretum, I'm going to need to turn all of this into dirt blocks. So I need to build that back in. And you'll notice that I've started building a pool over here. I'm going to fill this area in. I'm going to dig out all of these and then I'm going to fill them in with water. But I like to surround it with stone so that it looks nice. Now, the one problem with the arboretum is this. Uh, I need these to be dirt blocks, not myrtle grass. So they can have myrtle grass on them or the, ar uh, the arborist will not plant on them, the forester. So what I'm going to do is add uh, all of this. I'm going to make it buildable. So I'm going to build all of those things. And then I'm going to set up harvest jobs alternating uh, lines on this section. So now there's a reason for this because if the trees grow too close together, you will have some clipping issues where your arborist gets caught in the trees and can't actually dig himself out you still might have some of those clipping issues, just to be honest with you, because I have had a couple of times where my arborist has gotten caught in something. So be careful planting, especially I've found that palm trees are problematic at the moment. Uh, so watch out for the palm trees. But other than that, you should be able to just plant uh, in these in alternating rows all of this area. Actually, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest all of that out. And then I'm gonna build my floors as I need to here. So I do dirt cobble floors. And I realized I had just done those backwards, so there we go. This, in my opinion, feels like it gives me the most space 
that I can get out of doing this. So there we go. So my uh, farmer's going to come over and harvest all of the myrtle grass out of here, and my builders are going to build the rest of it around, and it should prevent me from having any issues with the myrtle grass growing back over onto these uh, areas where the arborist is going to be planting the trees. So I'll let time run along, and we'll see how that goes. Now, I have run out into an issue where I've run out of logs, so since my forester is just sitting around not doing anything, I'm going to set them up hacking down a few more of these trees and getting some more wood for me because that would be bad to have all of this stuff waiting to be done and just not have the resources for it. To be able to tell the resources you have you hit I and you can look it through all of the different resources that you have by category and then that way you can know if you have an issue where you know like the myrtle grass is sitting here on top of the uh, farm plot and it might actually regrow into there you can go into the seeds and you can just delete them. They're worth two rent a piece, though. So if you hold on until the merchant gets here, you can sell them to the merchant and he'll take it. He, merchants take a lot of garbage, actually. <laughs> so uh, I also have this other farm that's sitting here uh, vacant, not really doing anything. And my crops farm actually uh, unticked my uh, farmer because he went to the other one since it wasn't limited to unique. And now I want him to be on both and that's why he wasn't replanting the stuff that was over there so i'm going to set up an auto job in this fiber farm here and i am going to create some burr clovers and i'm just going to do the one-to-one -one thing so he's just going to continuously replant burr clovers and i'm also going to do that with lady harp and with the large crabgrass here And now those should all populate. And while he's working on that, all of the trees are being cut down by my uh, forester, and I am going to create my arboretum. Ah, we have our first merchant. So, here we go. He's traveling to share goods, and basically he'll take our garbage, which is fantastic. So, first thing I do when I meet them is I take all this waste food that I'm creating, and I sell it to them. Now he has 398 Rin, and I only have 50. And he's probably got something that's more expensive than all of that. But what I'm gonna do is go through and sell all of the stuff that I don't really need this amount of at this point. So no Myrtle grass do I need. That is right there, 60 Rin off the bat. And I'm also gonna look through and let's see, I should have probably 145 wood logs, I'm going to use those, but I have 95 oak tree seeds, and they're worth four rent a piece. So I'm going to sell those, and that is going to make me a lot of money really quickly. Uh, then I will trade with him that, and let's see what else I can buy. So he's got prickly bears. I like to have a variety of fibers. That's just me. I don't think you really need to, but I do like to. Uh, I'm going to have the grass seeds, but this prim grass is probably going to be just a different color of grass, and I don't really want to grow that. He does have pumpkin seeds, so I'm going to grow, I'm going to grab those. Those are going to be crops that I can actually plant and cook, so I will get those uh, in set. I don't need any wool cloth right now or cow meat. Pumpkin pie is tempting. Blackberry wine is nice. He's got lots of bronze ingots, but they're really, really expensive. Uh, so I'm going to have to pass up on some of this stuff, but I'll trade for that, and then I'll come back in here and see if there's anything else I can sell to make up the difference here. Let's see how much wood. Ah, he's only going to take 54 wood to get back. So I'm going to leave him with no Ren, because I just traded a whole bunch of stuff to him. Uh, I can actually get two more, bring two more Ren out of him, so I'm going to bring two more Ren with that melon seed right there. And now he is good to go, so he will leave. Now the problem is that he just dumps his junk right here. And now my villagers will sometimes spend time going to grab the junk and put it in storage occasionally. It's kind of a toss up right now and I think that's being worked on because of the pathfinding UI. Oh, there they go. So they're all running down here to grab stuff. Oh, they're just grabbing wood, okay. So they're doing jobs. So they stay doing jobs. Now, you'll notice that this fiber farm has gotten stuck. It has two burr clovers ready, but it also has this large crabgrass, and he's out of seeds for the crabgrass. And this can be an issue because now I'm just going to have to chase this around a little bit unless I wanted to uh, 
fill all of the areas up with specific um, with specific seeds that I want to plant. And that can be a little annoying at the moment, and it does require a little bit of uh, manipulation to make sure that you get right. But I did just buy a couple of new, uh, a new type of seed from this guy. Now if I can just remember the prickly bears, there we go. And I'm going to set the prickly bears up to be a one for one. And hopefully that might allow me to get out of this little loop that I have going on here. And there is a save and quit to uh, the front bug. This is something that we are aware of as a bug, and it is being fixed at the moment. So we've, we've uh, notified uh, Slepner about it, but <laughs> that, I think, is probably a good spot for me to stop this recording. I think you've got a lot of information about how to go ahead and move forward with the next segments. So good luck with your roaming, and uh, let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see in these tutorials.